My name is Randy Lincoln, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about being a senior citizen and figuring out through all of my uh, experiences what I think would resolve the future. Uh, starting back when I was five, I knew I wanted to be a nurse, and so I pursued that dream, and I became a labor and delivery nurse. And I was a labor and delivery nurse here in Fort Wayne for 15 years, and I had two babies at home. My husband worked day shift. After 15 years, I couldn't get off the evening shift, and we needed the money. So it was paycheck to paycheck, but I felt like we were visiting. And so uh, my husband's mother, who owned a successful salon here in town, uh, retired from her salon when her husband retired from Dana Corporation, and the two of them moved to the lake. And there she was, a very people-oriented person with her husband and fish. And she just about went crazy. So she started a business, uh, and she started into uh, a business called Mary Kay. And it was, a, it was a natural for her. She had a cosmetology background. She loved being with people. I, on the other hand, would walk down the halls of the hospital, even though I worked there every day for 15 years, and I would look at the floor. Because, you know, if you look at people, you have to say hi. I couldn't do it. Is there anybody here who feels like that? Just you know, not real comfortable with people. I didn't like it that way, though, but I didn't know how to change it. And so my mother-in-law came to me and said, I really think you ought to try Mary Kay. And I said, excuse me, I am a trained professional. I have a degree. I would never lower myself to sell cosmetics. And I walked away from her. <laughs> she came back to me and said, I really think you ought to try Mary Kay. This was about three months later. And this time, I asked my husband to keep her away from me because it was his mother. She finally badgered me to death, and I signed up to make her leave me alone. I got the kit, I tucked it into the closet, and I went on about my life. She showed up two weeks later. She said, how are you doing? I said, great. She said, good. Here's the address of your first skin care class. I'm here to babysit for the children. And I was trying to figure out how to kill her and tell God she died. I was so terrified. I wasn't going to do it. I hadn't gotten any training because I had no intention of selling cosmetics. And here I was with this address card in my hand, and I had just told her I was fine. So I put my, uh, my only dress on because, you know, I was a labor and delivery nurse. I went to work in jeans, jumped into unpressed jammies, and went home in jeans. So I put on my dress, put the box in the car, and I'm driving to this address. Now I have no idea what I'm going to do with these people, and I'm panicking. And I figured, how hard can this be? I do use the product. You know, put it on, take it off, feel your face. I can do this. So I got to the house. Now, on the way there, I had to pull over to the side of the road and put the kit together because I wasn't going to do it. I had never put it together. I have no idea how I put it in there. I just stuck it in there so that I could take it in with me. And I walked in, and here were these four people sitting in front of me, looking at me. Now, I already had butterflies. And they're looking at me like they're expecting something. So I gave them the profile, because I'd had one of those classes before, and I gave them the profile. I had no idea what to do with it, so they all filled out the profile. I tucked it on the counter next to me, and I started giving them products. I had no idea what to give them, because I, I didn't have any training. So I, I was giving them all the wrong products. When you do that as a nurse, people die. I was giving them all the wrong thing, and they were using it, and I was telling them what I did every night, you know, and what I... And they kept doing it, and they kept looking at me. And now the butterflies are starting to turn into bats. And I got to the second step, and I had them try on the mask, and I told them they had to wait for eight to ten minutes for it to dry. And I went into the bathroom, and I threw up. I was an absolute disaster. I had no idea how this was going to end. All I knew is that my mother-in-law would never be able to make me do this again if I just finished and I remember walking out, and those four women paid me $638. And I can remember driving home thinking I could throw up every day for $638. That was the illustrious start of my new career. But it was the great start of my self-confidence coming out. You see, when those women paid me $638, it told me that I had worth. 
it told me that no matter how little I knew, I still had something to offer them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at a, a four-time cancer survivor. And I'm sure that had something to do with my lack of self-confidence. But my breast cancer the first time was when I was 14 years old. The second time was when I was 22. The third time was when I was 24. And as I started to work with women, I realized that the whole reason I became a nurse was to help people. And when I did Mary Kay, I was able to help women look and feel better about themselves faster, without pain, and then they kept coming back to me. You know, when we have babies, we don't necessarily want to go back and see our labor and delivery nurse again, ever. <laughs> so as I started doing Mary Kay, I liked it more and more. And I kept hanging on to my job at the hospital because it was like a security blanket. Fifteen years is a long time. So I'm hanging on to my security blanket, not thinking about doing Mary Kay full time. That's not a serious job. And all of a sudden, in my labor and delivery, which is the happiest floor in the hospital, we had a situation where we had a stillborn baby. And when you have a stillborn baby, you lay right down and you die with your patients. And she was a beautiful little perfect girl, no reason for that stillbirth. And the parents asked me if I would, and I did, and they asked me if I would pray with them, and I did, and they asked me if I would baptize her, and I did. And I went home that night with a hole in my heart, but I'd done the best I could. And two weeks later, I was called on the carpet of the hospital after a blemish-free record at the hospital. I had been called by the chaplaincy department because it is a Missouri Synod Lutheran hospital and Missouri Synods don't believe in baptizing the dead. And I got angry because they were questioning my ethics. You see, I'm not Missouri Synod Lutheran. She wasn't Missouri Synod Lutheran, nor was her husband. And I knew that if it happened again, I'd do it in a New York minute. And it was at that moment that I realized why God had put a different career in front of me. And I walked away from the hospital, and I was terrified. How could I possibly make a skin care, selling products, a full-time job in my life? And what I found is that it fulfilled such a great ministry in me that I was not only able to make women look and feel better about themselves, but that it was making me feel better about myself. And then the turning point was that I finally went into management with Mary Kay. I had gotten those free cars. And I was at one of the Fort Wayne area events where all the management was getting ready at an awards program to go up and introduce ourselves. And as we're standing in line, I have a woman in front of me who turned around and she was telling me how excited she was that she was about to be able to have a breast reduction because she had such horrible back pains and, and things were working out well for her. And I was thrilled for her because she's a very dear friend and I knew how hard that was for her. And one of the management people behind me leaned forward and said, well, at least that's something you'll never have to worry about. And I turned around and I said to her, you're right. As a three-time cancer survivor, I could care less. And it was my turn to go up on stage and introduce myself. And when I got on that stage, and I introduced myself, and I walked down the other side, I realized that the next person behind me was not the woman that I'd been talking to. You see, she never went up on the stage and introduced herself. And when I found her, she was sitting in a corner, in a chair, sobbing. And I said to her, can I help? And she said, oh my God, I had no idea. I will never say anything like that again without thinking twice, and I said, well, praise God. And you know, she taught me right there two very important things. Number one, be careful what you say. And number two, I had a story that I could no longer keep to myself. You know, having breast cancer isn't something that you wear as a badge of honor. You don't tell people about that, but in that moment, I knew that I had to tell people about that because that may be a message of hope. And that's why God had given me the career change, the confidence, because I had to tell people about this. 
to be aware of what comes out of my mouth, to be very cautious when I'm around other people because we don't know what their life experiences are, do we? But she taught me that I had to go out and I told people about the things that had happened in my life. You see, God gave me a wonderful opportunity to build my circle of influence for just that reason, so that I could share hope. With only one, that would be enough. And I needed to continue, and even now, to find ways of building my circle of influence so that I can share my story. Not because it's all about me. It's not about me. It's not about my success. It's not about my fame or my popularity or how many people I have on Facebook. What it is, is about how you leave an imprint by what you do to help other people, how you help empower other people, and how you give other people hope through your experiences. How will you impact your future? Thank you.